Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to work on a rear drag Shimano uh, Sedona 4000R, the R being rear drag. It's a nice reel overall. This one is coming in because it has a, an issue with the anti-reverse, doesn't work. It's also been a long time serviced and apparently the last time it was serviced, uh, well, piece fell out here. There should be a shield there and it's not. But uh, Jonathan sent this one in. We'll see what we can do. And uh, if nothing else, we'll figure out why the reel failed. And maybe we'll even be able to do a full service on this one. So we're going to start by taking off the exterior pieces and parts. And I start by removing the handle. And uh, well, as I take those off, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you like to learn about fishing reel service and repair, if you like to learn about fishing reels in general. And uh, if you just uh, maybe you have a reel and you're working on it, and I just want to learn a little bit more about the process or the techniques used to uh, service those fishing reels. And I would encourage you to um, go ahead and, and uh, subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button. That will enable you to see what I'm posting and uh, well, whether it's a reel that you want to see more or learn more about. So for example, today we're working on a freshwater rear drag fishing reel by Shimano. Tomorrow might be a big trolling reel from the Atlantic uh, or the Pacific uh, fleets. And then maybe another day you'll see something else that'll be uh, traditional or a, uh, well, a, uh, a vintage reel. I don't know. We'll find out. You're always looking over my shoulder at what comes into my shop and that's always an indication of what the, uh, the day's mail brings and what I'm working on from a uh, a fishing reel standpoint. So if you like that, please subscribe. This thing I think should just come off. I think it's a collar that just... Okay, let's see if we can remove the side first. And there might be a clip up there or something. I don't know. The idea of a rear drag is that you can adjust the rear drag while fighting a fish without reaching over and grabbing a, uh, a top drag one and interrupting your fight. And this one has what's called the fighting drag. So it's kind of like a set it and then you can make a micro adjustment by swinging this lever over without uh, having to, to worry about tightening or loosening the cap. Kind of an innovative piece from Shimano. And I'm taking the three side plate screws out and putting them on my desk to make sure that they're the right, uh, all the same length. If they aren't, I would want to identify which one goes there and then change off of that. Okay, well, I'm still thinking that this whole thing comes down based on what I'm seeing inside here. But let's, uh, let's get up top and figure out what's going on with the drag itself. You can service that without taking that lever off, that's for sure. There's a horseshoe clip here. It's got an up and a down side to it. It's held in place by a, re uh, a retaining screw. So let's go ahead and take that screw out. This is a good place to tell you to take pictures along the way. If you're uh, working on a reel and you get stumped, well, pictures are going to help you to notice which way the orientation was, the sequence that uh, these pieces and parts were in. This one looks like it got jammed in. I don't think that was set properly on the way back in the last time. And uh, well, when you go to reassemble, you'll have pictures as a reference guide. All right, with that clip removed, we should be able to move the axle shaft up and out. Wipe that off. Now we should be able to take the main gear out. These have bushings, not bearings in them. And that's okay. These are freshwater reels. You don't need that much max drag in them. And uh, well, you really don't need 13 bearings in them either. That's your crosswind block. This is your crosswind gear. We're just going to mop up the case. But more importantly, you can see where the shield is missing. There would have been a shield that, that went in there. Don't know what happened to that. Don't need to know what happened to that, I guess. We're going to take the rotor off right now. And that'll help us to diagnose what's going on with the anti-reverse. Well, I want to take these pieces and parts, put them in my parts tray. Along with that retaining screw for the rotor nut. 
Then our rotor nut is probably a 12 millimeter. I have a little 12 millimeter tool here that I use. It came off of an old Mitchell tool. It's nothing but a, uh, a socket with a screwdriver to handle that goes through, but uh, it's convenient. Okay, with that off, we pull this up. And we have the anti-reverse collar here. Just looking for the override right now. And it looks like we might have all kinds of issues going on here. These three screws hold the collar in place. And I'm thinking right away that I know the answer without knowing the answer. Let's play along and see. I think the collar on the inside has been inverted. And uh, if it's inverted, the uh, doesn't grip the pieces. Well, wrong guess. But there is an awful lot of grease and debris on there that would stop this. This is an old style um, instant anti-reverse clutch. They don't make them like that anymore. Here is your, um, your override bearing. I was mentioning there's two sides to this. That side needs to face up, otherwise it doesn't grab the piece. So let's put that back in and see if it's working. I'll do that better this way. Bearing on. Put the clutch on. Put the Yeah, that's that's working. Just cleaned up the grease and it's, it's grabbing it. Sometimes traveling a little bit more than others. So I'm not quite sure what, who did where. It may be that this wasn't seated properly in there. Not sure. All right, let's uh, take a moment here, clean off the old grease on the pinion gear. And while I do that, I want to encourage you to ask questions. If you have a question that uh, well, maybe you're working on a reel and you're stumped. Maybe you just want to learn a little bit more about the reel. Maybe you just have a general question. What kind of fish would you chase for with a rear, rear drag fishing reel? Can I use it in the ocean? Those kinds of things. Whatever it is, if you leave that question, I do try to answer them. Leave it in the comment section. Generally, the next morning is when I will be looking in that comment section and seeing if there's uh, any help I can provide. All right, nice coating of that. I'm going to oil that bearing. I'm going to bring the bearing back over. We can seat the bearing in the case. Then we can seat this collar for the anti-reverse on top of the pinion gear. I'm going to get a fresh towel here. I want to make sure that I have all of the debris off of that. And then we have a couple of things going on here. One of them is that you need to align this stud here with the piece of metal under there. You can see the indentation. That's where that goes. These two studs go into two side holes here. So let's see if we get this right. Well, that's the way this one should be mounted. Let's see what happens going here. Well, that's clearly the override. Well, it's working better than it was. I can't say it's fully working. And uh, well, you just don't want to take these these uh, clutches off. But let's guess that there's a little bit of dirt in there. So we'll give it one more try here. We're going to just take a cotton swab to the best that we can. Just run these. I'm just checking to see if we're missing a bearing. Yeah, this has been a part. There's bearings flopping around in here that um, shouldn't be. So I suspect somebody didn't, somebody had this apart and uh, the springs were not set properly. 
I'm just going to open it up to take a quick look. You can't get these clutches anymore, so it may be that you have to work it as it is. But these are spring-loaded bearings, and it appears that one of these is not spring-loaded. Be careful as you take this apart. It's very easy to get it disturbed. Okay, well this is, as they say, what it is. those three screws back in. You can rebuild these, but uh, you need to be very careful if you do. Usually you're missing a screw or a spring or a roller bearing because when they get taken apart they get they behave poorly. All right, we'll put it back on. We'll call that what it is. Three screws go on the outside. So the it's not in the arm of the anti-reverse. May have been in the dirt that was on that collar. We've cleaned what we could on the inside of the rollers. We'll have some semblance of an anti-reverse, but it may skip. Actually, it's turning pretty good now. <laughs> All right, well, that's uh, kind of what it is. All right, we're going to degrease the inner case. We're going to use a penetrating oil for that. So a lot of times you just wonder if fishing reels could talk, that kind of stuff. What, what went on here. Somebody clearly had the case open because we're missing that little uh, collar and it does not quite sure if it was reassembled properly or not. If that's what was causing the, uh, the anti-reverse failure or not. Alright, let's go put the rest of the stuff back together then. I'll show you how to get to the uh, anti-reverse stack. I'm going to leave that fighting drag just as it is. You don't need to take that last piece of the arm off. It should come off, but it looks like it's kind of stuck in the case, so we'll leave it there. No big deal. Let's get the cross line block. We'll put some grease into the slot of that. Make sure that's clean. We saw that that uh, retainer clip was bent so probably did not get aligned and installed properly when that axle shaft was put in place. Next up we can put some grease onto the main gear. Use fishing reel greases and oils only. Don't use automotive greases or general household greases. By all means, do not use lithium grease in a convenient spray can. That'll only gum up the, uh, the reel. All right, take that axle shaft, make sure that's clean. By cutting a grease on that, reinstall the rotor before you uh, go any further. On this, we can put a, a shot of oil into both seams of the bale. You can also shake that up a little bit, make sure that it clicks nice and easily, which this one is doing. You can reinstall the rotor. Rotor nut goes on next. Start this by hand. And this came off in a traditional 
uh, lefty loosey kind of a way or counterclockwise so it goes on clockwise just that, tighten that down find the hole for the set screw and our set screw put that in here we can bring the shaft through now we have a little coating of grease see those two indentations there they go high and low on that cross wind block so it goes first and then you need to continue to turn the axle shaft until it seats in that rear drive. Make sure that you have a few both sides for the hooks. Don't force anything. If it doesn't close easily like a gate, it's not seated properly. Once you have it in place, get your tie down clip screw. Sometimes, if they fall off, if they're getting started, use a little dab of grease. Let's tighten that down. And we can put the case on, and then I'll show you a little bit about that bottom drag. The case has got some dirt on it, so we'll use a, a scrubby or something to get the dirt off. The case can go back on. It's got a bushing inside there. It's a plastic bushing. You don't do anything with that. Three case screws. Just two bearings. I saw one of them. I guess the other bearing is in the line roller. It's not on the main gear. So the Shimano rear drag wheels have been around. There's different versions of them. And there's the uh, ever popular X series, the FX and the others, and uh, those are general what I'll call pond reels. This one is a little bit bigger, it's a 4,000 size, so it could be used for inshore ocean uh, if you like, or bigger lake fishing. That's what you like. There's a clip here now. It's, uh, you can see the two uh, kind of dimples on that holding this assembly in. You want to work one of those sides out. This is never easy because there's a lot of tension on that spring and so even though you can get it started you may not be able to hold it. So what I generally do is get it started, reach for another tool, get it underneath there where it's separated and then you can remove it. Remember what side you're taking this out of. There's two ways this clip can go in. This one for reference point is coming to the back side of that fighting drag. With that clip out, you can remove the assembly. There's the uh, press plate. There's the uh, hex washer. There's a spring. And then we should have a, a little retention washer and a drag washer in here. There we go, there's your tension washer and your drag washer is the last piece here. So this is the downside of the rear drag wheels, you just don't have big drag washers in there. Okay, and that's your drag washer assembly. Okay, so you can see inside here there is a cross set of pins in here. This fighting drag is going to work by moving those up and down, lessening or, or putting more pressure on the drag washer itself. To reinstall that then, let's lay this out in a sequence. You have the fighting drag washer, then you have the ear washer with the tag is going to face outbound, then you have the spring, the uh, spring bottom, the click mechanism and the click spring itself. So let's go ahead and put these back together now. 
and start by putting that drag washer in. And these should sit easily in the case. If you notice that that drag washer was torn or uh, in any way damaged, it would have to be replaced. Get the tag uh, eared washer, the points face out on this. And you're going to need some kind of a small tool to get these set properly. Next in was the spring. And we have the little washer that goes on the base of the spring. Then we have the adjuster or click. And now we can put our click spring back in. Start, start with the one side, it expands and then it'll grab the hole on the other side. Just like that, and now we have a click washer. All right. When you move your cap, there's four studs here on that click. They're going to correspond with the four indentations on the back end of the screw cap. As you screw this down, it's going to put more pressure on the drag washer, and that's going to enable you to tighten or loosen that up. Now you've got the click telling you that you're tightening it up. I'm going to put that screw on the back end of this to hold that cap in place. And then we'll put the spool on, put the, uh, this is your drive now, and then your fighting drive is going to put more pressure from the top down. Alright, let's, uh, let's clean this off a little bit. We have a little bit of grease on there transferred from the uh, glove. There is no drag to speak of in a uh, spool that's using the rear drag feature. The only thing usually that you have to do if it becomes a problem is that there is a uh, little click spring up top here that separates to hold the spool on and when you push that down it uh, loosens it. If you are having a problem getting your spool off or a problem where your spool is not going on with the Shimano's, you'll notice that there's two indentations here. If you grab those and turn that button, you will take the button cap off the button and then you'll be able to see that spring and, and reset it if you need to. Let's put that back on. Put the handle on. See how we did. I'm, I know we have an, an anti-reverse to some extent now. I'm not sure if we're going to get a skip. Visually it looked like it was okay inside. It wasn't missing any of the bearings, the roller bearings in that clutch. Again, if that clutch fails, you're out of luck. You don't make those any longer as replacement parts. All right, give it a spin. Well, look at how nice and smooth that is, right? It's, so the greasing and the oiling and all that stuff helped. Question, does it go hold the reverse? That's holding the anti-reverse. There you go. All right, so it was probably the old grease and dirt that was on that collar. We seem to be doing pretty good here. A uh, little click of the bail, and we're set. So whatever it was that was holding it, uh, well, seems to have been, uh, been freed up. I'm going to guess it was a dirty collar on the AR. Go ahead and test that drag. Make sure you're tight here. Yep, we're tight there. You can back it off now. And now when you're uh, using that fighting drag, your, your spool should let out a little bit. And then as you go to fight, bring it up and you're at max drag on that. So there you go. That's the Shimano Sedona 4000R. Happy with the way it turned out. Sad that we're missing that little water shield there, but uh, well, that came in that way. Not much we can do with that. So I hope you've enjoyed it. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for all it is that you do to keep us safe. I truly appreciate your, your efforts and your career dedication. To everyone, uh, well, here's a, uh, an example of a reel that uh, can be given a second chance. Take the time, keep your reel serviced, and uh, when you identify a problem, uh, address it at that point. Don't continue to try and run the reel uh, and then find that, well, maybe you break apart or something. I do uh, thank everybody for watching, and uh, please stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you like this video, please like it. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.